Well, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hello friends Hopefully you are happy on your home Okay, now we are from Nine Group Would like to explain you about ethics in intercultural communication And that uh, I'm Yulia As a first speaker Would like to explain you in ethics in communications And my partner Second speaker, Ikfa, would like to explain you about the guidelines. So now, uh, we are going to the first topic is ethics in communication. So, ethics in communication. In the previous discussions, in this chapter, we have focused on the problem that can arise in an intercultural situation and issues that can impede communication between people of different cultures. So now, ethics in this discussion would like to introduction to ethics. So ethics, the meaning of ethics. Ethics can be seen as a reflection of conviction that are rooted in culture. As a set of principles, ethics also provide guidelines that influence your manner of communicating with other people. Ethics therefore helps you determine what you ought to do, how you ought to do, and how you should interact with other people. So now, I will explain you about the uh, ethics ethics is a tool that you may use when making difficult moral choices these choices of often involve the balancing of competing rights when there does not appear to be one correct answer so ethics can influence the communication morals of someone whether is good present of all of communication of people such as in the media or digital communication so a basic concept of this text is that communication is an instrument that can be used for an infinite number of purposes sell a car run for public office teach children obtain direction make friends persuade others to believe your views express feelings and etc so uh, the, by the communication your word can change behavior attitudes beliefs perspective perceptions, moods, and even a person's sense of self. So, uh, this observation of very moral system raised the, the question of whether there is an absolute morality and set of universal ethic principle. We conclude that the answer is no, no, although people hold many of the same ethical precepts. So, we offer you a brief overview of two of the most common perspective, relativism and universalism. So, this is employed by people and cultures to deal with ethical issues. So, we are going to the relativism first. Cultural relativism is predicated on the belief that ethical system can vary among cultures. All systems are equally valid. And there is no single system that is better than the others. So, means what is believed and valued in one culture may be different in other culture. From the relative relativist perspective, what is correct 
incorrect, right or wrong, true or untrue, is determined within the culture. So the the, the relative perspective of ethics hold that uh, values and moral are culturally bound and primarily primarily depend on the perspective of the culture and then the second is universalism culture universalism takes a position diametrically opposed to that of relativism so means Universalism maintains that regardless of the people, context, time, or place, there are immutable universal ethical precepts that apply to all cultures. Cultural relativism is often de defended because it mm, purport result in tolerance and cultural universalism is frequently seen as the only way to avoid nihilism. Perhaps ethics and morality would be absolute in the world that should be but because we live in the world that is we will preset on the assumption rightly or wrongly that ethics and morality are, are cultural, culturally relative so i think that's all from my explanation and to be continue with my partner as the second speaker thank you well thank you for the time i am Ikhwan Rahakiki, I am the second speaker of this material. I would like to explain you about some guidelines for intercultural ethics. There are some several guidelines for intercultural ethics. The first is, be aware that communication produces response. As we know that when we do some communications, it should produce a response, right? So, intercultural messages that we send produce a response from the recipient. When we communicate with someone from our own culture and has the same culture, we can anticipate it and know the response, although not always. But when we do some communication with other culture that has different culture with us, it is much more difficult to anticipate it and to know the response. For example, like uh, in United States culture, when we ask direct questions, they will clearly answer yes or no. And it's different with the Northeast Asian culture. When we ask direct questions like, do you feel tired? They will answer uh, ambiguous response like, yes can interpret no, and no can interpret yes. So the point is that it's difficult to know how people will react to our messages and intercultural communication. So what should we gonna do to anticipate this? Uh, be mindful and try to focus on both the other person and the social environment. And it means that consider our messages to the person and also the context. And the second guidelines for intercultural ethics is respects others. As I told you in this slide that all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. So means that every human beings in this world should be respected and has respect to the other's culture. And can you imagine? And how do you feel when someone belittles you, ignores you, embraces you in front of the others? The answer is obvious. It will hurt you. So, we cannot deny that every single human being should be respected and should respect others. And why respecting is the important thing? 
for intercultural ethics, Confucius has give a statement uh, without feeling of respect what is there to distinguish man from beast. The third is seek commonalities. So finding commonalities or finding some similarities among many cultures can act as an ethical guide. Why do I say so? Because similarities is important thing to help us to decide how to treat other people without looking their race, ethnicity, gender, age, and etc. Uh, for example, like when we take a look at our brothers and sisters that live in Africa, they live in a poor condition, but when we want to help them by looking at the race, gender, ethnicity, and the age, it's totally different with us. But we, when we try to see some similarities as a principle of human being, we would kindly and exactly share the goodness to them as an equal to feel and live happily in this world. That is uh, the benefit of seek commonalities or finding some similarities in many cultures. The fourth is uh, recognizing and respecting cultural differences. From the previous explanation, I told you that finding similarities can be an ethical guide. And here, uh, finding some differences can be an ethical guide too. As I told you in this PowerPoint slide, uh, all people have the right to be equal and the equal right to be different. So, understanding, recognizing, and respecting cultural differences uh, can help us to develop an intercultural awareness with an ethical perspective. For example, like uh, we can today, uh, we can order a latte at the Starbucks in Mumbai, eat McD in Berlin, buy a Toyota Corolla in Cairo and connect to google.com almost anywhere in this world. So what those example means to us? Uh, those example give the impression that everyone everywhere has a similar lifestyle and enjoys the same things. And the benefit of recognizing, appreciating, and accepting cultural similarities and differences is important to develop our intercultural ethical perspective. The last guidelines is be self-responsible. Be self-responsible is our final ethical consideration because as we know that it is difficult to manage ourselves to be responsible with our action in our daily communication. So it is important thing to know that if we are going to live in this crowded, interconnected world, we need to recognize our individual roles, our individual jobs within that world and hold ourselves accountable for our own actions. So, be responsible for our action. Well, uh, those are five guidelines for intercultural ethics that I have explained you. And I hope it will be easy to catch. And thank you very much.